This is the eighth and final video in a series covering theory behind x86 buffer overflows, how they work, and how they can be exploited. Last time, we looked at a few methods for directing code execution somewhere within our payload. In this video, we're going to finish building our exploit to execute arbitrary code on the target. So, quick summary. Our overflow consists of prefix of trun, space, full stop, then 2006 bytes, followed by the return address. Now we need to add some shellcode. For this video, we're going to include the shellcode at the end of our payload after the return address. But the same concept should apply if the shellcode is placed elsewhere. We can use MSF Venom to create this payload. There's a lot that you can do with MSF Venom. You can create payloads to run specific shell commands, create users. You can list the payloads with the L switch and payloads. We'll choose a reverse shell for this. We'll use the Windows unstaged reverse shell payload. We'll specify the IP of our attacking machine as the L host for the reverse shell to connect back to, and the port that we'll have our listener set up on. We'll specify exit func of thread. This can allow the program to continue running after we exit our shell. And we need to exclude our bad characters from the shell code, just being null byte. And we set the formatting of Python and a variable name of shellcode. Great, MSF Venom has created us a payload of 351 bytes. Let's take note of this payload as we'll need to paste it into our script. However, we will make one change. Due to the way we're handling the encoding in our script, we'll remove the Bs from the string definitions. Let's open up our script again with the changes. We paste it in our shellcode here. It's been omitted from the screenshot due to space. We've set the return address to the jump ESP instruction and then the offset of 2006 bytes. And then we build our payload consisting of the prefix of trun space full stop, 2006 bytes of A, followed by the return address. Now you may recall the NOP sled that was mentioned in an earlier video. These 16 bytes of no operation will allow for a bit of padding for our payload to unpack him and we can then append our shellcode. Do you remember that if you're including your shellcode within the space required to overflow the buffer, as opposed to appended at the end, we need to ensure that it's sufficiently padded with extra characters to trigger the overflow and rewrite the return address. Let's load up immunity and vuln server, and we'll set a breakpoint at the jump ESP instruction that we're using, and we can resume the program and run our script. Great, we've hit our breakpoint. Let's press F7 to continue through. Great, we can see our NOP sled and the start of our shellcode as the next instructions to be run. Let's close immunity and run Vuln server by itself as immunity may interfere with our shell. And let's set up a netcat listener on the port that we set on our reverse shell and we can run our script. Great, the reverse shell is connected and we can execute any shell commands. Let's create a file on the desktop to validate it. Great, that's worked. So in this video, we've looked at how we can generate shellcodes and add it to our exploit, the final piece in developing a functioning exploit for our target. In this series, we've covered the fundamentals of x86 and focused on the stack to discover and develop a buffer overflow exploit. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.